Welcome to valuationpodcast.com, a podcast and video series about all things related to business and valuation. My name is Melissa Gregg, and I'm a financial mediator and business valuation expert in St. Louis, Missouri. Today, we're speaking with Alex Prasad, who is located in Michigan, and he's actually an entrepreneur and a business attorney. And with a decade of experience in early stage companies and M&A law, we thought that a good conversation today would be talking about M&A transactions, deals, and kind of what creates a deal maker or a deal breaker. So welcome, Alex. We're kind of going to be talking about some fun things today. How are you? Um, I'm good. Thanks for having me. But overall, if you could measure risk on a scale of 1 to 10, it goes from 10 to 11. All the personal human relationships internally, to your point, employees are changed. I've seen everything under the sun in terms of how the seller clues people into the transaction or not. I have always tried to be 100% transparent in my entrepreneurial things about what our goals are, whether or not the interests are aligned. Just, just to me, I help sleep better at night. That's not always the wisest thing. So it's not blanket advice there, right? Or, or blanket experience share. Um, I've seen people keep everyone in the dark until you know the last minute. That's kind of scary for the buyer. I, I'd be worried from the buy side, but maybe they trust the seller's perspective. Then you think about all the third parties around key customers. Um, so a deal breaker, Melissa, is just not having the awareness of the first, st first step that you're increasing risk by doing the deal. The least risky thing to be, to do is do nothing. I've had, I had a client fairly recently who, and sorry, from this risk perspective, you can't control the people. Doesn't forget about what the rules are, non-competes or whatever. You cannot control it. Nobody can. The seller can't control them. The seller doesn't have a claim on, you know, them working. They can walk out tomorrow. It doesn't matter what an employment con. No one can make you do anything. Sorry, spoiler alert. Very, very rare injunctive relief, right? Like that is the rules. Um, and on the buy side, so I had a buyer who bought, identified the key employees. They were dealt in, if you will, locked in. Well, but the next level all left and started a competitor, you know, the next week. Nothing you can do. Horrible outcome, but there's literally nothing anyone could have done. You could have, I guess, try to contractually obligate everyone would never work, would never fly. And they could just break the contract anyway and start the competitor and you have to sue them. And 12 months later, you know, maybe you'd get somewhere, but probably not. Um, so you have to understand going into it what you're getting into, basically. And does that happen? Extremely rarely. I think I got one example in 10 years, right, of that happening in such an extreme version. But for sure, from a buy side perspective, understanding the human is similar theme, right? Understanding the relationships, who really is key both the seller's perspective, but I don't know, as a buyer, I'd be really hesitant to walk into a business when it's like first day at school, right? You have to, some visibility there. There's only so many like checklist items you could check off in terms of key vendors, key, you know, customers or whatever. The internal beating heart matters too. And there's no solution there. There's no, if there's a lawyer who tells you, oh, I'll draft this agreement in such a way that, or some advice is, oh, it won't be a problem because he's really, uh, it's a risk factor. You should be aware. Of.